There were several questions regarding numbers 97 and 99 from section 9.1, which dealt with radicals and rational exponents. So the first one that we're going to take a look at is going to be the function f of x is equal to the square root of x plus 4. And what you want to note here is first off what the general shape is going to look like. And then how is this moving? Or how is this shifted on the graph? So first off, the shape is going to take on kind of like, it looks like half of a parabola turned on its side. I know that the description isn't the best, but um, it's going to take on that kind of shape. And then the same rules that you would learn in section 8.5 in terms of how to shift a graph apply here. So basically what I'm saying is the same ideas that you had learned prior still apply here. There aren't any special cases where the rules are suddenly going to change because you're working with a different function. So what I want you to note here is that you have a plus 4 that is inside of the function. And I say that it's inside the function because I'm saying that I added the 4 underneath the root. So from what we recall, how is this moving? This is a horizontal shift. And this is going to be to the left 4. Because recall that on the inside, when it's inside the graph, it's deemed as kind of a house of lies when it's on the inside. So if we see a plus 4, we should think the opposite. So this should be minus 4. Okay, now what I want you to do is, we'll first off, go ahead and set up a coordinate plane. And apologies that this is not that beautiful, but it'll go ahead and take care of what we need it to do. The next thing I want you to note is the parent function. Okay, so the parent function is just what the function is going to look like before we add additional layers or complexities. So that's just going to be the square root of x. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a look at a table of values. And I'm going to deliberately pick values such as 9, 4, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 4 because these values are easily evaluated inside of the function. So if we evaluate that, we get 3, because the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of 0 is 0. And note that these values right now are not real numbers, so I can't use them to graph on the plane. These values uh, we'll encounter later are imaginary numbers, and imaginary numbers do not exist on your two-dimensional coordinate plane. So we'll go ahead and note that, again, we're going to move to the left 4. Since this is a horizontal shift, this means that I'm going to be affecting my x values, because if I'm moving to the left, I'm moving along my x-axis. So I'm going to subtract 4 from each of my values, in this case the ones that will matter, because again, I can't use negative 1 and negative 4. And then I will note my new coordinate points. So this will become 9 minus 4 is 5 and 3. 4 minus 4 is 0 and 2. 1 minus 4 is negative 3 and 1. 0 minus 4 is negative 4 and 0. So we can go ahead and plot this. Uh, let me add a few more tick marks here. And let's go ahead and plot this then. So 5, 3 is going to be around here. 0, 2 will be here. Negative 3, 1 is here. And negative 4, 0 is here. So if we connect this, we do get the shape that we want. And if you notice, the parent function would have started at the origin. So I can go ahead and kind of give you guys a slight idea as to what the parent function would have looked like. So this is where the function would have been before we moved it. 
So if you notice, I'm going to highlight this kind of motion in green, I moved everything back four units. So you can kind of see, at least from the starting point of your square root function to the starting point of your transformed square root function, I moved it back four units. So the last thing that we're going to note is the domain and the range. So recall that the domain pertains to all of your x values that you used. So in this case, notice that any values beyond negative 4 are not being used, okay? There's a whole dead zone behind it. So actually, I'm going to start at a value of negative 4, and it's going to go off into infinity, okay? Again, note that infinity will have a parenthesis next to it because infinity isn't a real number. It's the idea of a number and the negative 4 will have a bracket, and that's because I have um, a negative 4 in my coordinate point, so I'm using it. So remember, a bracket means that the value is being used. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to take a look at is the range, and the range applies to my y values. So again, note that the area beneath the square root function is not being used, so your third and your fourth quadrants Nothing is existing there. It's a dead zone. So I'm not using any of those y values. But again, note from this coordinate point, they start to exist at 0. So I'm going to use all my y values starting at 0 and including it, again, because it's in my coordinate point. And this square root function is actually, it's increasing, okay? So as you were, if you were to continue to follow it, it would slowly continue to rise indefinitely. So that's why my range will go from 0 to positive infinity, okay? This is the same idea that you can apply for question 99. Um, I would encourage you guys to try that one on your own. And then if you get stuck, please come see me for clarification.